What's up, YouTube? This is Brev 2 I have been playing this game and for like 10 minutes. I didn't realize that I didn't hit record, so we're going to ride the snake. That's the first time I've ridden the snake. So, uh, hey, everybody. I, I'm i going to start over now because um, we're playing Getting Over It with Benny Foddy today. I am sick. I want to restart. I'm going to restart. Oh my god, I'm so upset. This game came out in 2017. And it is a very old game at this point. And it is not uh, trending as it was at this point in, uh, in culture. But I've been playing it recently for reasons I'll get into in a second. And I think this game is fantastic and super interesting um so i, I kind of want to dissect it for a little bit um and at this point i've gotten pretty good at the game so basically today we're going to be completing the game in the sit down he's been a fighting and uh, i just recorded this so he's going to be talking for a good 10 minutes while I while I play this. If you got your best shirt dry cleaned before a wedding and then immediately dropped food on it. If you won an argument with a friend and then later discovered that they just returned to their original view. Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. All right, thanks for coming with me on this trip. I'll understand if you have to take a break at any point. Just find a safe place to stop and quit the game. And don't worry, I'll save your progress always, even your mistakes. This game is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002, titled Sexy Hiking. The author of that game was Jazuo, a mysterious Czech designer who was known at the time as the father of B games. And B games are rough assemblages of found objects. Designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. They're built more for the joy of building them than as polished products. In a certain way, Sexy Hiking is the perfect embodiment of a B game. It's built almost entirely out of found and recycled parts, and it's one of the most unusual and unfriendly games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hammer. That act of climbing. Hang on, I'm gonna turn the music up. Oh yeah, smooth jazz. So relaxing. Tell me this is a rage game. We're gonna talk about it in a second. Anyway, when you start sexy hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. It might take you an hour to get over that tree, and a lot of people never got past it. Prod and poke at it, exploring... There's a point to having Benefati talk, by the way. Trying to find a way up and over, and there's a sense of truth in that lack of compromise. Most obstacles in video game worlds are fake. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough time. In that sense, every pixelated obstacle in sexy hiking is real. Ooh. Obstacles in sexy hiking are unyielding, and that makes the game uniquely frustrating. But I'm not sure Jazuo intended to make a frustrating game. The frustration is just essential to the act of climbing, and it's authentic to the process of building a game about climbing. A funny thing happened to me as I was building this mountain. I'd have an idea for a new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to make it easier. It already felt like my inability to get past the new obstacle was my fault as a player rather than as a builder. Actually, I think he might be quiet. Any, anyway. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts oh, yeah. to climb them. Much louder, my ears. It's attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something real. When you're building a video game world, you're building with ideas, and that can be like working with quick set cement. 
You mold your ideas into a certain shape that can be played with. And in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable, like rock. And at that point, you can't change the world. Not without breaking it into pieces and starting fresh with new ideas. For years now, people have been predicting that games would soon be made out of prefabricated objects, bought in a store and assembled into a world. And for the most part, that hasn't happened, because the objects in the stores are trash. I don't mean they look bad or that they're badly made, although a lot of them are. I mean they're trash in the way that food becomes trash close. as soon as you put it in the sink. Things are made to be consumed and used in a certain context, and once the moment is gone, they transform into garbage. In the context of technology, those moments pass by in seconds. Over time, we've poured more and more refuse into this vast digital landfill that we call the internet. It now vastly outnumbers and outweighs the things that are fresh and untainted and unused. When everything around us is cultural trash, trash becomes the new medium, the lingua franca of the digital age. And you can build culture out of trash. But only trash culture. <sighs> I always have to hold my breath at that point. Be music. Be philosophy. That's the part that got me stuck for the bulk Maybe of the first time I played this. Culture is. A monstrous mountain of trash, the ash heap of creativity's fountain. A landfill with everything we ever thought of in it. Grand, infinite, and unsorted. There's 3D models of breakfast. Gen X's fanfic novels, scan magazines, green screen Shia LaBeouf, banned stuff scenes on LiveLeak, Facebook's got lifelike bots with unbranded adverts and candid shots of Kanye and Taylor Swift mashups, car crash epic failed GIFs, Russian dash cam vids, discussions of McRibs, discarded, forgotten, unrecycled, muddled, rotten, untitled. Oof. Everything's fresh for about six seconds until some newer thing beckons and we hit refresh. And there's years of persevering, disappearing into the pile, out of style, out of sight. In this context, it's tempting to make friendly content that's gentle, that lets you churn through it but not earn it. Why make something demanding if it just gets piled up in the landfill, filed in with the bland things? See, it's so interesting. When games were new, they wanted a lot from you. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just to piss you off, but... Resetting and delaying you. Oh, I love Players it. played stoically. Now everyone's turned off by that. They want to burn through it quickly. A quick fix for the fickle. Some tricks for the clicks of the feckless. But that's not you. You're an acrobat. You could swallow a baseball bat. I could swallow a baseball bat. Now I know, most likely you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, while some dude with 10 million views does it for you. Like a baby bird being fed chewed up food. That's culture too. But on the off chance that you're playing this, what I'm saying is, trash is disposable, but maybe it doesn't have to be approachable. What's the feeling like? Are you stressed? I guess you don't hate it if you got this far. Feeling frustrated? It's underrated. An orange is sweet, juicy fruit locked inside a bitter peel. It's the That's orange not boat. how I feel about a challenge. I only want the bitterness. It's coffee. It's grapefruit. It's licorice. It feels like we're closer now. Composer and climber, designer and user. You could have refused, but you didn't. There was something in you that was hidden. I love this game. Am I the only one that loves this? It means a lot to me that you've come this far, endured this much, every wisecrack, every insensitivity, every setback you've forgiven me is a kingly gift that you've given me. We have the same taste, you and I. Oof. It's not ambition, it's ambition's opposite, an obdurate mission to taste defeat. You'll feel bad if you win, so I put this snake in for you. Okay, so we finally caught up with him, and I might get stuck on this part because this is just one of the more time-consuming um, and pixel-perfect jumps. So we can finally talk about this game. I love it. I love everything about it, and it's it, because it's not really a game that was made for some guy to play on YouTube and be mad at it. It's so interesting, every single part of its design.
because it's been lumped in as a rage game and sure the controls are bad and that's what it is surface level i think this game is brilliant because okay so let's start off the reason this game captured my attention and why i'm playing it right now is uh there are three achievements for this game only three and the first one is to reach the summit of the mountain the second one is reach the summit of the mountain twice and the third one is reach the summit of the mountain 50 times and i'm at a, f a phase right now where i'm going for achievement hunting because i want to get some perfect games because uh you know it's quarantine i'm trying to figure out ways to keep myself busy i'm a bit bored with dead by daylight as of right now so that's how i'm spending my time and i'm having a great time doing it so i just wanted to be the game once or maybe twice since it's not that far off but the 50 times was just not happening because i was already having a hard time with the game at that point and um I've been playing it for about six months, on and off, um, like most people, and I finally conquered that uh, part with the orange. That was the part that had me stuck for so long, and I got to this part, and I beat the game relatively soon after that, and that was two days ago, and I was like, wow, that was great. I really liked everything about that, so I went for the second you know reach the summit second and that's when i was like wow i really like this game and so i went for 50 and i'm now sitting at 20 wins right now toward the summit of the mountain and uh, if we beat it now it'll be 21 so the thing is this game is oh, i forgot what i said last time but i said some really really good stuff i usually just wing it for these segments um this game is really, really personal, to me at least. And I know on surface level, all of that voiceover is just to make you angry because you're trying to focus on the game. Um, I think this game is really, really personal and super unique. And the reason it got so popular is because um, I think it's such a unique concept on gameplays, on gameplay side. And it is. I think its interaction with the physics engine is unparalleled. At least to the likes of something like, I don't know, Half-Life 2. Have you thought about who you are in this? Are you the man in the pot, Diogenes? Are you his hand? Are you the top of his hammer? I think not. Where your hand moves, the hammer may not follow. Nor the man. Nor the man's hand. In this year is will, his intent. The embodied resolve in his uphill ascent. And I know a lot of people look at the voiceover as like, oh my god, this guy's trying to be so wise, he just made a hard game, not a big deal. And, um, I mean, before I started this video, I was about to kind of say that, but as I listened to it more, well, the first time I recorded this, I was like, wow, I think there's something really here. Because a lot of it is just like, you know, stuff about Jazuo and B-games and sexy hiking and dumb poetic stuff and surface level yeah that stuff has no place in this game but it complements what you do in this game especially once it becomes just the grind to 50 wins really well and i think it's beautiful especially this snowy scenery because this game came out in november um and a lot of youtubers were playing it november december because it took them a while to beat it and i remember this game is just so nostalgic to me and warm and gives me fond memories of Christmas time because it's so um it's just so connected to that time. I think Bennett Foddy's about to talk again, so we're gonna try to get up here and reach that point. Now you've conquered the ice cliff, the platforms, the church and the rectory, the living room and the factory, the playground construction site, the granite rocks, and the lakeside. You've learned to hike. There's no way left to go but up, and in a moment I'll shut up. But let me say, I'm glad you came. Ooh, what's not being? Oh, you just lost a lot of progress. <laughs> That's a deep frustration, a real punch in the gut. <laughs> it it was just that really heartfelt thank you, and then 
we immediately get that sarcastic stuff that you get toward the beginning. So, I, 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 I love this game, and I wasn't about to spew all this, like, philosophical, philosophical stuff the first time, but as I was playing it, I was just like, wow, this game is actually really great, and it's one of my favorite games now, it, which surprised me, I know. I dedicate this game to you, the one who came this far. I give it to you with all my love. <sighs> so, that'll be 121 for me. But I think the whole viral thing with this game and the whole, like, um, the whole reason how it came about was that it was a viral game that, um, just a bunch of YouTubers played. I think that's literally what Bennett Foddy was talking about in this. And I don't think this is made to be a hard game. I think it's meant to be a timeless game that has I'm going down the road feeling bad. Lord, I'm going down the road. Um and I don't know. This there's just something about all of these components put together, the art style, the gameplay, the voiceover, the music, all of it just culminates in a really just heartfelt experience. And I, I think the reason I made this video is that a lot of people see getting over it as the hard game with the guy that talks the whole time and pisses you off. I think the more the the real way this game is supposed to be played is the way I'm playing it. Learning it over and over again, getting better, and getting something out of it. And I did get something out of this experience. I think this game is just made with love and was a really touching experience. At least in my eyes. I might I might be reading too into it or just Benefadi's voice is just too sexy for me and that's why I made this video. I don't know. But I love this game, and I've been playing this nonstop for the past couple days, which is why. The first reason I made this video is because I wanted a chance to, you know, record this since I'm not going to be doing a lot of other stuff besides playing this game, but every single time I play it, I love it, so. To say that getting over it with Bennett Foddy is smarter than you think is an understatement. The game is ridiculously smart because... There's a line toward the start, and I think this is the thesis of the game, or it leads into what the thesis is, that uh, he's talking about sexy hiking, um, which is a parallel to, you know, getting over it, and that the developer, Jazuo, didn't intend to make the game frustrating. Um, and that parallels to getting over it, because as I talked about in the video, um, it, it wasn't, at least from what I gathered, it's not intended to be a frustrating game. At the very basic level, that's what it is. And he goes on to talk about, like, viral culture and how stuff is, like, looked at for a, a, a little fraction of time and it's just throw, thrown away and becomes trash. And um, that's exactly what happened. That is exactly how everyone treated Bennett Foddy because they thought that dialogue was pretentious. Everyone who played it was just focused on the gameplay and beating it because it was hard. When there was always something below the surface that meant something. It's so, like, everyone thought that dialogue was pretentious when we heard it. Because, oh, he's just doing it to make you angry because the game is hard. Whereas, it's all about conquering failure. And the next time you play it, you get something different. And the next time, and the next time, there's, it's so genius. And... The whole method of playing the game once and beating it and throwing it away is something that Bennett Foddy wants to overtly kill with this game. And he, he did. It's a, it's a one... It's, it's like a one-hit wonder, I suppose. That everyone just... We followed it like sheep. We all thought that this game was just trying to be so stupid when in reality... We were the ones being stupid, and we didn't see what was lurking beyond the surface. And I bet Bennett Foddy was sitting at home and watching everyone play this game and follow all the beats that he knew they would do 
in terms of approaching the game. And the achievements and the voiceovers and the music and the game design and the poetic symbolism, all of it goes hand in hand in hand in hand to make a genius game made by one ambitious video game designer. And I think this game will be, well, maybe it won't be remembered forever, but I think it definitely should because a lot of people don't give the game a chance. And I think everything below the surface about this game is so smart. It blows my mind. So, um, yeah, I recorded this post me making the video because I had a little bit more time to think about it and I came to a more of a consensus on how to treat the game. Right now it sits comfortably at number 11 on my top 50 games of all time, which is up there. Um, I might even move it up because, man, this game makes me so... It's so smart and so touching and so personal on so many different levels. It makes me so emotional that this game was such a piece of art. And it's a, an experience in gaming that can't ever be topped. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of learning to get to the point where you open up your third eye as it was with this game. But I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Never turn off voiceover volume when you play this game. Hey everybody, I'm back again. Uh, I keep thinking of new things to say, and that's a testament to how great the game is because it has so many sub-layers. I was gonna say, just, I'm, I'm gonna make this one brief, um, because I just wanted to make sure, I, would, I wouldn't I would let myself live if I didn't get this on video. Um, I went into the video, this video, and I was just gonna say that I think this is like a streamer's game because of the intricate way that the achievements were uh, planned out to make the challenge less and less imposing to the point where even I wanted to take on the imposing challenge of 50 wins and um, I mean I went that is an interest intricate part of the game design and then I made the video and I came out with a completely different philosophy and then after I did that I came up with a completely different one too like how many layers are in this game Okay, that, I'm seriously, like, I just wanted to say that briefly because, man, this game is genius. It blows my mind. I'm going to be thinking about it for weeks or now. It's so good. It's so good. Anyway, yeah. Bye, guys.